In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Good morning. As we gather to celebrate today, we remember during our liturgy the people of the parish. We ask God to be with us today and to forgive all our sins. Lord Jesus, your mighty God and Prince of Peace, Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, your Son of God and Son of Mary, Christ, have mercy. <clears throat> Lord Jesus, you are word made flesh and splendor of the Father, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O oh God, who have made all those reborn in Christ the chosen race and a royal priesthood, grant us, we pray, the grace to do will grace to will and to do what you command that the people called to eternal life may be one in faith of their hearts and the homage of their deeds through our lord jesus christ your son who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the holy spirit one god forever and ever amen A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, I will take the children of Israel from among the nations to which they have come and gather them from all sides to bring them back to their land. I will make them one nation upon the land in the mountains of Israel, and there shall be one prince for them all. Never again shall there be two nations and never again shall they be divided into two kingdoms. No longer shall they defile themselves with their idols, their abominations, and all their transgressions. I will deliver them from all their sins of apostasy and cleanse them so that they may be my people and I may be their God. My servant David shall be prince over them, and there shall be one shepherd for them all. They shall live by my statutes and carefully observe my decrees. They shall live on the land that I gave to my servant Jacob, the land where their fathers lived. They shall live on it forever, they and their children and their children's children, with my servant David, their prince forever. I will make with them a covenant of peace it shall be an everlasting covenant with them, and I will multiply them and put my sanctuary among them forever. My dwelling shall be with them. I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Thus the nations shall know that it is I, the Lord, who make Israel holy, when my sanctuary shall be set up among them forever. The word of the Lord. The Lord will guard us as a shepherd guards his flock. The Lord will guard us as a shepherd guards his flock. Hear the word of the Lord, O nations. Proclaim it on distant isles and say, He who scattered Israel now gathers them together. He guards them as a shepherd his flock. The Lord will guard us as a shepherd guards his flock. The Lord will ransom Jacob. He shall redeem him from the hand of his conquerors. Shouting, they shall mount the heights of Zion. They shall come streaming to the Lord's blessings, the grain, the wine, and the oil, the sheep, and the oxen. The Lord will guard us as a shepherd guards his flock. Then the virgin shall make merry and dance and young men and old as well. I will turn their mourning into joy. I will console and gladden them after their sorrows. The Lord will guard us as a shepherd guards his flock. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Many of the Jews who had come to Mary and seen what Jesus had done 
began to believe in him. But some of them went to the Pharisees and told them what Jesus had done. So the chief priests and the Pharisees convened the Sanhedrin and said, what are we going to do? This man is performing many signs. If we leave him alone, all will believe in him, and the Romans will come and take away both our land and our nation. But one of them, Caiaphas, who was the high priest that year, said to them, you know nothing nor do you consider that it is better for you that one man should die instead of the people so that the whole nation may not perish. He did not say this on his own, but since he was high priest for that year, he prophesied that Jesus was going to die for the nation, and not only for the nation, but also to gather into one the dispersed children of God. So from that day on, they planned to kill him. So Jesus no longer walked about in public among the Jews, but he left for that region near the desert to a town called Ephraim, and there he remained with his disciples. Now the Passover of the Jews was near, and many went up from the country to Jerusalem before Passover to purify themselves. They looked for Jesus and said to one another as they were in the temple area, what do you think, that he will not come to the feast? The Gospel of the Lord. As we continue in our Lenten journey, our first reading from the Old Testament from the book of the prophet Ezekiel once again offers us hope as we're going through these very trying times. And I find it again incredible how the readings during this Lenten season, especially our Old Testament reading and the Psalms, really can apply to the situation that we are going through. And they are good reminders to us that God is with us in the midst of all that we are experiencing. We hear some very beautiful words spoken today from the prophet, and we hear how God will make a dwelling with his people. We hear the prophet say, my dwelling shall be with them. I will be their God, and they shall be my people. We have the assurance of knowing that God does not forget us, that God lives among us, and that God's promises are fulfilled. And we know in Jesus Christ that God did make his dwelling among us. For again, the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. And this word that Jesus Christ came to proclaim the life, light, joy, and peace of God's kingdom. And he offered many the passion of God in their lives. People who were on the outcasts were now welcomed to become one with him. And because God dwelt among his people, the people had the assurance of knowing that they were not alone. And those words offer me hope and consolation as I do, uh, as I hope they do for you. Because as we go through these trying and difficult times, there doesn't seem to be much resolution at this point. And we just wonder how this is all going to end when it's going to end and what eventually is going to happen. We think about all those poor people who are unemployed now and on the margins because there's no work for them because of the circumstances that we find ourselves in. The only hope they have is putting their trust and hope in our loving God. And as God was there for the people of Israel, as Jesus came to proclaim God with us, we have the assurance of knowing that God is with us during these difficult days. We pray together in our responsorial psalm, the Lord will guard us as a shepherd guards his flock. We have the assurance of knowing that as we make this journey to Easter, as we continue these last few days of Lent, as we move ahead during this tragic pandemic, the Lord will guard us as a shepherd guards his flock. We are not alone. Our loving God is always with us. A 
As children of God, we offer him our prayers this day. For the church, may God use the, this season of Lent to purify and unify her, we pray to the Lord. For all who hold positions of civic authority, may God inspire their hearts toward generosity and goodwill on behalf of all those who are struggling to make ends meet at this most difficult time, we pray to the Lord. For those who carry heavy burdens, especially all our healthcare workers, may, they, may the easy yoke of Christ help to lighten their loads, we pray to the Lord. For those in our parish community who grieve the loss of a loved one, especially all those who have died because of the coronavirus, may God's peace be with them, we pray to the Lord. For all those who have died, and we remember today in a special way, Bucky Pizzarelli, or for those who will die, may the Lord guard, guide them into eternal peace, we pray to the Lord. Gracious God, we ask that you receive our prayers and answer them according to your perfect will. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the gifts we offer from our fasting be acceptable to you, O Lord, we pray. And as an expiation for our sins, may they make us worthy of your grace and lead us to what you promise for eternity through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For through the saving passion of your Son, the whole world has received a heart to confess the infinite power of your majesty since by the wondrous power of the cross, your judgment on the world is now revealed and the authority of Christ crucified. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks, as in exaltation we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you in need of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Joseph, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace, peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Take away the sins. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Have mercy, Lord, on your church as she brings you her supplications and be attentive to those who incline their hearts before you. Do not allow, we pray, those you have redeemed by the death of your only begotten Son to be harmed by their sins or weighed down by their trials through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless us the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, go forth, the Mass is ended, and have a good day.